All right. There we go. That'll probably mess up the slideshow, but we'll see what happens. But we talked about the North and the South Pole being, uh, you know, getting simple with this stuff of the North Pole being blue and that normally be, being ex, ex, assigned to acceleration and uh, red being the South Pole and the further confusion that the North Pole seeking, you know, on a magnet is obviously seeking the South Pole, it's opposite. So it, it just always goes into layer of confusion. You can see it throughout all the sciences and it's a duality, right? And there's, once you get past this all being one rainbow and you just can't see everything in between it, um, it and it starts to fractal and multiply out, the, it never ends. So you kind of, the intuition, the beauty, the artwork, those are the creativity. Those are the real driving factors. And it comes down to intuition ultimately. So a big part of this subtle energy series started with Reichenbach, who um, part one, who used human beings, um, usually who were gifted because they were sick. Um, they all of them like faced illnesses. And the, you see this throughout the best naturopath I know uh, was almost died from type one diabetes when she was a late teenager and, and then just started to study and practice and, you know, was trained by some pretty advanced Christian schools on um, the deeper arts of spiritualism and hand healing. And um, my first experience with that was like, wow, that's like uh, Jesus type stories out of the Bible. So what's going on here? And, and you know, the replies were very practical. Um, if you will, like, yeah, you got to practice it every day. You got to, you know, have the discipline. You got to be diligent with it. You got to be creative and invent your own ways to listen to your inner self to make the decisions to take care of yourself. Um, so you can lead by example when you're trying to help other people and also have fun at the same time. Let's see if we can move along here. So you see the blue, red. And here you see the mechanics of a toroid, basically. And how you see the white poles and the, the blue and you see the same colors. You see a little bit of orange in there. Um, all these things are like a magnet. If you chop the end of a magnet off, you still end up with the north and the south pole. But if you arrange a group of magnets in a certain way, an inner area and an outer area can be its own monopole, if you will. And that's kind of how cells work, right? They're attracted to each other in the blood. But if they get too close, they should repel each other. If they're unhealthy, they can't repel each other. And then they end up stacking on top of each other. And a lot of times that's a you know condition in the micro sense that shows severe you know imbalances so again with the unified model you can study what's out in space a million miles away and learn about what's going on inside of the human body or vice versa and we always come back to the uh, toroidal shape again and the apparent north and south pole but i will say this about it to kind of simplify this confusion between the North and the South pole and what's, what's good and what's not good here. You see like similar colors, right? You don't see the blue and the red, which would represent polar opposites coming together, being attracted. Now you're seeing like a resonance um, where you see like two stars illuminated. And this is what cause you really started to uh, observe is this mutation of likeness as stars were close to each other and came together, but moreover, stars that were way, way far away, like opposite ends of the spectrum, say opposite end of the uni visible universe, were responding to each other like they were communicating. Um, and so that's where he really started to take interest in this torsion field. And, you, you know, you start to connect the dots with these time space and wormholes and all this stuff even those are like you know fatal attempts at best to explain things we don't understand 
at the same token, there's a truth of instantaneous action. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. Um, I guess spooky because it didn't follow the uh, laws that were set up. So here you see, a, a, like this is exactly what uh, cellular mitosis looks like on a like a yeast cell uh, multiplying. Um, so you see like a single star can give divide itself and then stars from far apart can come together. So there's all these relationships between stars that are just as complex as a relationship from one human being to another, um, whether it's male, 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 female, or, or whatever. And so a lot of times with the star systems, you'll see the yellow uh, and the blue and the red. So when things come together, you'll see a yellow and then that condition seems to grow a green and reflection back off a planet, right? You never see a whole lot of green if you pay attention, which is considered the equilibrium or, or the balance point. But that's what you see coming off the, the planet in a big way. Green water for fresh water, uh, blue water uh, for the ocean water, and then uh, green in the vegetation. Uh, it's kind of curious that the color palette um, when I really got into frequencies, and if you look at Din Shaw's work, all this complicated stuff that's going on with, you know, infinite amount of frequencies, and it's like, you know, how can people even like guess at this stuff? People are just downloading metadata, and really, you don't need all that to make a harmony. It's just a simple rainbow or the simple seven notes of music, and your intuition, I guess, is the real practical point of, of the complicated world, even though um, there's a huge benefit to being able to share information and get information. Um, this is very unique. And when I was hunting for binary star uh, images to make the slideshow, um, I know this is going to sound funny, but in Sedona one night, I saw this in the sky and it appeared out of flickering, two small flickering lights and turned into this, like a big balloon with a tail. And it moved like really, really slow. And then it flickered out and went away. And I, I called somebody who was nearby and had them come look at it too. So it's not like, I mean, they saw it plain as day. And you see a lot of spacecraft craft, uh, stuff around Arizona. And it, it was like, this is weird because it doesn't sound like spacecraft or, you know, I don't know what it is. Like it would have to be a hologram to not be this. But when I saw this, it instantly hit me. Um, and then if you look at some of the former webinars, I didn't have time to pull it in today, um, but there was that sun that Soho caught. So in a way, everybody's seen this um, in a different way on the sun. It was a little bit inverse because the sun was bigger and the black pa plasma, which is a different aspect too, um, had three vortexes that wound into one. You can kind of see a little vortex tail here in a 90 degree relationship driving into the dielectric equilibrium, which is the, the uh, illusion of a straight line between the North and the South pole that moves as the magnet changes shape. So this gives you an idea how water uh, works and changes poles in a way. And so here you see like, you know, the blue and more, going more white and the yellow orange, again, the colors like showing the phases of relationship which eventually uh, combine in one harmony and one color and form a stable uh, single star. And that's where uh, Rev really departed completely at that point when he started seeing stars way apart have this behavior where they weren't like spinning around each other. They weren't in the same proximity. Um, and it made me second guess, you know, my thoughts of, the birth of a planet coming off the sun in that Soho plasma shot. Uh oh, and uh, oh, now we're stuck with the music. Let me try and fix this. Why not? Let's just go to that one. All right, is everything copacetic here? Everybody can hear me. All my technical errors between Zoom and and uh, 
PowerPoint. So all what you just looked at was normal binary stars. He was referring to stars that were millions of light years apart or further. Um, and there was a resonance that was real time and almost like a communication. So he probably had trouble proving there was a communication. But Paul LaViolette, um, the most accurate uh, by data uh, unified field physicist, he spoke at our convention in 2018. Um, I was really fond of his work because it's a, it's a little bit more, uh, uh, how do I put it, uh, in step with science, but still connects to the outcomes, you know, the practical world of, hey, this is what happens when you synergize these five, six things together, these different notes of music, and everybody has the ability to choose their own unique, you know, five or six tools. You don't need a hundred of them you know, five or six herbs, five or six methods of, you know, whatever radionics or wh whatever you're talking about and that make this like musical instrument that you pick up to uh, enjoy life more basically. Um, and so after some time, like the, these stars have a signature like DNA. And this is where he made a real hard case is the spectral signatures were identical on the stars where it, it was somewhat like a mirror image but it wasn't always a mirror image, if that makes sense. So it's like some kind of connection happens that makes a mirror image, uh, but it's not always there for everything, but things are working towards that order. And so he took a fairly conventional approach um, and arrived at, gee, the universe is governed by torsion or by spin. So I thought it was a great segue from total intuitives who were just working with colors and people and magnets and crystals to Reich and who didn't have much trouble, von Reichenbach. There's no, um, like Beisham out of the same area, the 1700s, he had a whole bunch of trouble uh, because he was starting to apply these things. And that's what you see, right? Uh, von Reichenbach just researched, he didn't really apply or, or at least we don't know about it in, in great detail. Uh, and then Reich, Wilhelm Reich, which is part two, he, he was the one who first brought up T bacillus as being the hormone derivative for cancer and cancer simply just being a normal function, but uh, the body taking on that normal function when it gets reverted in time too much is like a spasm. You know, when the body's like dying, it spazzes out and goes back to like primal, just uncontrolled, just grow, just grow. It's all we got, you know, and then that turns into more or less a, a womb uh, for to grow a bunch of critters away from your immune system, just like a baby is born. And he started making that whole correlation that was later confirmed by Cantwell very scientifically. So turns out that Reich was like, very correct about the predictions they kind of blasted him as a quack uh but he was playing around with uh weather and you know cloud busters and charging up water and all that uh kind of thing and had some deep insights into the health world so where Kazirev ended up going was time density so what he said is time gets manipulated so um we've talked about in the past webinars like inertia uh, blue being inertia preserving and the North Pole and the South Pole of the magnet both having an inertia preserving section in their center, which would be the center of the toroid. And we do know that the magnet is 100% a toroidal uh, shape. Um, so it's all very like picturesque for, you know, a child to understand the fundamental common factors of the universe a little deeper you know, would be the inertia preserving and whether it's pulling in or putting out and, and that starts to get a little bit complicated at that point. And when you really get into Cozy Rev's work, um, it starts to get a little complicated because you don't really understand if this teeter totter goes up over here and another one goes down and that's where it starts that you're basically borrowing energy, but it's not like from right next door. It could be from like, a star a million miles away that you're borrowing energy from is the way it turns out when you look at the whole equation. But there's batteries and magnets, right? Capacitors and inductors. That's, that's the game. That's the rule. And so like the South Pole is normally assigned to a battery, right? So 
I keep harping on this. There is no good and bad in the North and South Pole. As a matter of fact, they both have the same qualities if you use the right part of them. And one is uh, stronger in some regions than the other. So it's like using them correctly or anything correctly um, is one thing, but then there's a deeper layer and it's just a principle, right? The magnet just kind of shows the principle that the, hey, there's four poles here. There's a north and a south in the north and there's a north and a south in the uh, south. Uh, really a plus and minus and one's dominant over the other and then it flip flops on the other side like a mirror image and that leads us to the most modern day physics that's tinkering around is the holographic uh, form uh, check to see if you got your mic on we got background noise turn it off please if you do and so you know like everybody knows the time like when you're having a good time or you're in creation um, like time goes by like really, really fast. Right. So it, this isn't, all of this is very, very common sense type stuff. And, uh, you know, how you get to be a famous physicist over it is not trying to take anything away from, cause if you go deep into his work, he was phenomenal and very motivated from mysteries and the beauty of the universe. Um, and so you'll see the same principles that we've talked about in every webinar as we've you know moved through the micro now to the macro and it's a great segue into Schauberger um, is the way I look at this um, 100 percent like Schauberger was all about types of rotation and and we talk about the triplets and in the blog I, I kind of give what I call key codes Paul Leviolette's like a cryptologist he like cracks all these complicated key codes like the riddle of the sphinx when he presented that at our conference, I didn't understand it when I read the book, but when he presented it at the conference, I was like, holy, you know, bleep, like he 100% nailed this. This isn't like a made up story. And he's like super, super good at that. Um, so these are like key codes and music has a lot of key codes of harmony in it and what makes a full harmony, what makes a partial harmony um and the hard part being like rhythm and percussion and beats um which also occur anytime like different notes are played together and new notes are born out of nowhere so like music just the principle of sound i think they often refer to this in the bible i don't remember um exactly uh but you know before there was things there was sound and that's a principle, right? So you can take two notes and not the same, like asymmetry difference, right? And they get together and manufacture a third note. And there's no explanation for it other than how does, you know, how does the whole space pick this up? There's an explanation for it with math and geometry, like there always is, but there's not really a good explanation for how it amplifies and how sometimes it's louder than the original two notes. And that leads us into overunity energy systems, which leads us to understand how the human body and animals and plants work, right? They're all, you know, they they all work on their own and the earth is spinning on its own and the sun's spinning on its own. There's no, but there's no man like, you know, sitting there feeding it, except for maybe the ether, whatever you want to call that. If you want to call that God, fine, you know, uh, and all the manifest of it or a female God, fine, but it's, it's really an it at that point and all the manifest gives it the male or the female, right? It's neutral and non-judgmental and, and just seeks to uh, manifest and create. And those principles, those male female principles are really what drives the universe. Walter Russell being like the king of that whole simple musical atomic uh, understanding. So we, all of you are probably familiar with Ormus at this point. Um, and that was Hudson, and uh, it was a, a acronym for uh, rearranging the electron orbits. But we talked about this too. It's the spin of the atom that determines the electron orbits. That's why chemistry has to take a back seat to both basic physics and electrodynamics. Um, so it gets out of its like opposites attract and synthetic. Uh, creation state and starts looking at how nature does chemistry rather than the exact opposite of it um, travels through the physical without loss so what's a scalar wave people talk about that people talk about radionics like is 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 that a spin system or is the toroid traveling along a dielectric equilibrium line 
uh, i.e. string theory, um, traveling outside the conductor, like Tesla was talking about, is that that's also a toroid, right? It's following along in the, you know, your waveguide is basically your wire, not the conductor of electrons. And that's where what we call a superconductor. So we get, you know, to explain all this, the negative to the positive has natural superconductor properties. Um, so all this complex stuff that remains a mystery is important for human beings to understand a whole and ask why this isn't in our education system, the questions, the experiments, the experiments are extremely safe and fun versus a lot of uh, what's been done in the past. Changes chemical reactions, changes the softness of the water, changes uh, oscillations within the water. All these things, right, we've talked about. And water is, is what you're seeing happen um, out in space with these binary stars is, is most likely what's happening with the, uh, you know, the 100 nanometer pairs that grow in the water uh, of water itself that we've talked about that, you know, double helix guys market it as double helix, but it's a property of water. Living water assembles itself into 100 nanometer star pairs, if you will, and work together to assemble solar systems and shapes and you know everything we see in the universe so the same thing that's happening in space the water of space is happening on the water of the planet and they're somewhat asymmetrical mirror images of each other uh, just like i'm sure there's another earth somewhere doing very similar things on a similar timeline as us um, torsion fields have memory so this is where water and memory come from because water is just the physical embodiment of the ether so it's not so much the molecule, it's inside the atom. Every atom has this, every cell has this, every cell has water in it. Space contains every atom. You start to get the simplicity of it. And so the whole thing's being recorded and has a memory. Bear with me on these transitions I'm stuck with here. All right. So we had these charts from before what the North pole was and what the South pole was and how it uh, related to behavior. Um, so here's a little bit more on that. And, and what you got to watch for is everything is in transition. Tesla gave a big speech about this to electrical engineers. And it's like about Dewar and Dewar is the one who started working with cold cycles or refrigeration systems. Everybody else is working with heat doers working with making stuff colder, right? It's kind of different. Like if you ask people how to freeze something, how to make cold, not that many people know how to do it, how that exactly works. Well, it's a relative ground point of a substance and an interaction that does that. The substance that, you know, has a boiling point that's really, really cold. Um, and so you see things going on here and you see this is a breathing system. We keep talking about that, that you can't have one without the other. So there is no like North Pole is good. The point of the crystal is good and the South Pole is bad. But you'll kind of get that implication because the breaks, right? if you put the South Pole on a plant, the plant can't grow. But there's a time when the plant needs the breaks in order to do the whole collective cycle and even within itself. It may need the breaks to survive if the environment's gone haywire. So it goes dormant, right? There's the breaks like, hey, we're not going to try and uh, eat poison. So let's shut down all systems and let's survive until the poison clears. Like defense mechanisms, very important roles, just like a race car. Like you don't need the brakes all the time on a racetrack. Uh, you know, some ovals, you just got your foot on the floor the entire time, but if something goes wrong, you need the brakes and to get off the track, you need the brakes, right? And some of us get stuck in that on mode all the time. They call autoimmune where our nervous system fries itself, stops communicating. Now all the organs are running around like maniacs. And then that leads to cancer, right? Some form of it, right? Whether it's tumorous or not, I think we're going to find that the nervous system itself is a, becomes attacked. This is what Carrie Reem said is the first deep stage illness comes from the attack of the fine nervous system. The eyes is a sign, right? If the nerves behind the eyes get attacked, uh, all sorts of little things you can't really feel or you're not used to that gets attacked first. And then it can get deep into the nervous system where you lose motor control, which, you know, we have names for, but that's just, you know, disease, uh, whatever weakness gets you first, 
but you're aware that, hey, this is going wrong and the body starts putting the brakes on certain places and shuts things off, right? Your digestion will plug up and your metabolism is sky high. That's why like age, you, that's a, a severe form of cancer. It's why you lose, lose weight, the, the real part of cancer we're talking about, not the uh, growth of yeast cell, out of control yeast cell growth. Um, so you can take a look at these and kind of see how this could get confusing. But if you remember, everything's just breathing. And remember, we started with von Reichenbach. So if you tie that uh, to the torsion field, it's right-handed spin. But it doesn't mean that right-handed spin is the right thing to do all the time. Um, if we look at Kangen machines, they're serving up uh, water that has both in it. Uh, a right-handed kind of grow condition in the water plasma itself. But if you take the polar side, the high pH, which is somewhat irrelevant, that's the brakes. And so when you turn the machine up, you got this good water plasma adding acceleration, you know, and then you got brakes and you got the water polarized, whereas a good water would have both of them stored and called up and given when needed, right? That's the whole key to this is when the plant calls for it, it has it and that's called adaptive water. And that's where your nervous system is working and, and where you're not autoimmune anymore because your body adapts. When you go autoimmune and the nervous system, you know, switches from, you know, parasympathetic to sympathetic and back and forth, you're stuck in an oscillation and you're on your way like to, to instability and wobble, like similar to just falling over. That's your field starts collapsing or falling over or over expanding it could happen in any direction uh, same thing happens when they watch star pairs some of them destroy each other and a star doesn't form some of them combine and make a very strong and then they can see galaxies uh starting to form around them so everything you could possibly imagine is going on in these uh like seek likes pairing from destructive uh situations to um constructive situations, all based on the proper amount of imbalance, uh, if you will. And this thing is silly stuck. There we go. And here's a little bit uh, more straightforward, right? And, and you can see the R and the L is for right spin and left spin. And obviously, you have to have a direction of flow in order to make that call. Because if you're we're facing each other, what's spinning the right to me is spinning the, to the left to you. Um, and it gets confusing because the perspective's 180 degrees out. So, you know, you have to orientate perspective and get some flow and there's always counter flow. So you have to know uh, which one you're talking about flowing in what direction. And science is 100% completely lost there across the board, uh, except for the people who get good with the art of it, more or less. Um, And obviously, uh, in the previous ones, we gave reference to the uh, book um, by uh, Swanson, Life Force, The Scientific Basis. Uh, book's pretty expensive. Um, you can pop around for a used one and, and see if you can get it. But really good book and a lot of references if you want to go deep into it. And a lot of experiments you can conduct yourself. Um, as far as like using your intuition, a lot of people use radionics and there's complex forms and simple forms. I always go for simplicity, um, but there's a lot in there on that. And I will say this, that the um, guys who douse for water, it takes practice and development their whole life. And guys who douse for oil are far, far more accurate on record than the most advanced seismic equipment that we have. Um, just a note. So the human being who is well-developed is way out doing our best technology and everybody can go there. Some people easier than others. Most people have to work hard and pull every bit of knowledge and focus, right? That's what this is. That's what y'all are doing here is attention and intention towards a deeper knowledge that you can start to apply. If you ignore all this and just go to do it, unless you're like a Jimi Hendrix and born to play the guitar, whatever all that is, um, which most people aren't. Um, and you can develop beyond those people anyways, because they generally don't develop because they get it naturally. So it's like, yeah, hey, I don't have to really work for this. So I'm not really going to go into it. I'm going to go into something else and 
through any avenue, you can achieve a depth and a fractal understanding where you can understand how the body works, looking at how star pairs behave. And you can understand stars by looking, you know, at the details of how the blood behaves. Um, so when I was looking up Kazi Rev uh, pictures, um, this popped up with his name on it all the time. And he was, I guess he used this diagram to explain the breaks, you know, in the heat, where the heat is and the, in the plumes, like our mimbiotics comes out of these toroidal plumes, you know, where there's an energy field around this and that drives like the red makes a bigger blue is kind of what he was saying. And they work as a breath uh, to make life happen. And so there's no good or bad in it. It's a full cycle. Uh, no misinterpretation by him there for sure. Uh, what was good or what was bad. And he went with time density, slow things down, speed them up. It's relative. Um, so you have to look at how your mind's looking at things like and how it might work. You know, speeding up your metabolism might be the cure for something that's, uh, you know, otherwise going too fast already because of blockage, right? It's a blockage. So, you know, usually in an imbalance, there's a blockage of flow. And whether it's a, any system, it doesn't matter. It leads to a failure of the system. So you got to look at all this stuff in the proper context. But the reason why I pulled this photo, um, it's terrible resolution, is uh, I came across it last night. And about, I think it was about 2009, um, I used to do diagrams at about three in the morning, I would wake up and I would just draw diagrams. And I had a stack literally three feet tall of diagrams of, of universal motion. And this was before I studied any of these guys. I didn't have a lot of reason to. Um, and this was my diagram. And it's one of the few that I kept the other thousand. I was like, this is the same stuff over and over and over again, but I didn't realize it while I was drawing it. And I went back and looked at it years later. And I was like, man, I was like drawing the same stuff over and over and over again, but it didn't seem the same. And I remember towards the end, I was like, Hey, I'm going to apply this to like waterfalls and cliffs and clouds and, you know, veins of the earth and cold veins and hot veins and water veins. And then when I saw that with, uh, you know, the torsion, right, you see the egg, you see all the fields, the counter flows everywhere, the different shapes and geometries made like used in Freemasonry that are underpinnings of, you know, a lot of what's going on in nature, right? Um, see down in the right hand corner, you see that symbol, I forget the name of that priests always wear, um, which is an egg on top of a cross, basically, when you really, really look at it. Uh, just just kind of cool to remember it and have my memory struck by that. So uh, there's a twisting, turning, rotating world. Um, and Schauberger, that's the next one. Uh, that's where I've spent most of my practical application is Schauberger and Tesla. Tesla is really hard to do and is not really overly related to water other than some very important references, one which can be found in the Colorado experiments about one of the most difficult problems if they don't scrub it out in the new publications. So it'll definitely be in the older books for sure. That's a copy of the one I had where he makes a water reference. And then Tesla disappears and starts filing water patents for the rest of his career um, as he disappears. And so this is the segue into Schauberger. And uh, right on time, even with all the catastrophic technical failures. And uh, I have to uncurse Zoom and its relationship with me. So that's two in a row I've tanked. So this was Schauberger's submarine. And the reason why I bring this up um, is this was way before submarines, nuclear submarines came to be, um, way before submarines came to be, and long before uh, the movie about the submarine that didn't use the propeller. So it raises the question, you know, was that movie based on total science fiction or was there some truth in it and that's going to be part of our giveaway question here and then we'll go to questions i'll stick around for questions i'm i'm not going to beat the whole torsion thing to death or the 
the North and the South Pole anymore. We can move off of it. And Schauberger, I'm going to do that one with Isabel and kind of create a PowerPoint and let her uh, give a dis dissertation. So I stay out all the math and the geometry. Uh, and Schauberger, in my opinion, was the most articulate at describing the subtle energies beyond like blue and red and how they really worked and how you could make the North Pole build quality and build volume and how you could make the South Pole build quality and build volume and how you really could never get those two apart. And if, if you ever saw certain things, it's because things were being overdone or abused or, or overdriven, don't, no matter what it is. So there's the ultimate simple everybody knows is how much and when, and most everybody knows what to do. It's just developing the discipline, creating your own matrix to do it and enjoying life and letting it flow. Once you have that discipline, it'll come to you. That's a lot of people call that channeling. It's just your body and your water antenna is good. So that's what we do. That was the design basis all the way back in the day from the people who conceived the original recipe uh, through channeling um, of the flow form that we use was for increased consciousness because it was like, duh, if you're more conscious, you can figure out the rest. So why nitpick over this chakra or that chakra? Let's go with the one that sees and becomes aware and feels more and then can build their own tools from the universe itself. In other words, your relationship with God, your relationship with the universe, your relationship with the ether, however you want to look at that. And then here you go. Where did Schauberger get the idea for the submarine? From watching fish in the river. And this wouldn't mean anything to anyone, probably unless you were a fisherman. Long before I was a fisherman all my life from a very young age. That's what I did for church. I didn't, I got sick of Catholic church. So I tucked out at like 5 a.m. and went down to the river, which is close by, really nearby the home. And I fished most of the day. I would usually come back in the evening. So I got a lot of hours on the water when I was a kid, especially if I wasn't catching fish or I was catching fish. I was determined to stay until that ended one way or another. And then in Wyoming, when I was fishing for pleasure, not guiding someone on the middle fork of the Powder River, my contemplation sitting on the rock, I was smoking a ciggy, sitting next to a waterfall about halfway up the waterfall, and it was a good 20 footer and the water was screaming. It was early spring. And I think I've told this story before, so sorry for those of you who've heard it in the past webinars. Um, I, I watched these trout over and over and over again, uh, try and jump up and they, they just couldn't get anywhere. Uh, and it's like, why do they keep trying one and two? How do the trout get further upstream? You know, and people talk about ducks and duck eggs. And, you know, you're fishing in the mountain at seven to 10,000 feet. Like there's no ducks. There's no web feet, nothing. There's no stuff picking up in ponds. And, and yet the fish up there are like more colorful. They're more, they're evolved differently. It's almost like a spiritual thing almost when you look at the coloring and, the, and their abilities, right? And as I'm thinking about all this, um, one of them jumps and he's starting to, or he or she is starting to hold still in the water for a long period of time, like right next to me. And I'm like, I think that thing's like figuring it out. And then I saw it like quiver and just like disappear in the up direction. And I, my, I was upstream of my buddy, Mike Walters, really good friend of mine. And we love to fish that particular Canyon together more than anything. And he caught up and I was like, and we used to talk to each other about this. Like, dude, how did the trout get up there? There's no ducks. I don't believe that. I think he's the one who brought it up to me. I go, yeah, I don't believe that neither. I go, I think somehow they're getting up them waterfalls. And uh, I told him, I go, dude, I saw it. I saw, I swear. I mean, I might be wrong, but this thing disappeared and it was like hovering in the stream. Well, then I read that was 25. No, actually 27 years old. I remember and then it, it wouldn't be until like my late thirties where I studied Schauberger and he describes it like it's going out of style. Like, yeah, everybody who spends time in the mountain streams. And he basically said the fish lose the ability to do that because the water loses its properties and then the fish lose their properties. Then the trout disappear. So that was the whole point behind the trout and the brook trout and the golden trout are the big indicators of water quality. 
So like if you see the brook trout start to disappear, which ironically is what they try and wipe out everywhere out west, they're always trying to kill the brook trout. So a, a weird irony. So there's the final anecdotal story on all this. And the question for the free portable, um, and we'll do it by chat box, first one to get it, and then we'll do a shower unit. And you'll have to call the office uh, to do it, to process that. I don't have any mechanisms here to do that. Uh, there's going to be two questions. Um, So the first one's pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna wait for this to materialize. Um, this, by the way, was an early Russian sub that if you take the top view was like identical and pictures say that they had like gill intakes on it. Um, and so there's kind of a curious story behind all this on the question of fact or fiction. Um, what, was the drive system on the submarine red october called first one to get it gets the portable we're waiting on the chat box from the movie the hunt for red october uh, i think you guys are having to look this up or my chat box is broke and there she is there's the the red october Nobody's got it. Are you guys even there? Somebody type something. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you guys don't know this, or maybe I'm a weirdo for knowing it. I don't know if I'm going to accept that one. But they did refer to it to that, so I might have to. I'm going to give it to you since everybody stalled out. It's a Caterpillar drive system. But they did call it that in, in the movie, the Magneto Hydrodynamic Drive, when that a CIA guy was explaining it who dressed up like an officer, but they referred to it as the Caterpillar drive system, which with the oscillations and Shawberger, it's kind of interesting. All right, question number two, who was the captain of the Red October? Not the actor's name, the actual character. It's like um, nobody's seen this movie. Come on. All right. M got it. That's correct. All right. So that gets the shower. So Monique, take note of that. Victoria to everyone and M to everyone. I like how we have an M. It's like some James Bond thing going on here. All right, and then uh, I'll hang out for questions. If anybody has any, sorry about the technical stuff. Um, it's been a while since I've done these and I'm not a big fan of Zoom and it all happened again. And thank you, Todd, for figuring everything out with me and we had it down pat. And uh, when I was hitting people's mute buttons, it was killing the slideshow and shutting the music off. We knew my mute button did it. Uh, then I actually found a way around it and all that melee. But I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time. Again, I hope we've gotten simpler and simpler. Uh, and we've gained from it. Well, y'all have a good night. I will leave it on for a little bit in case anybody pops with anything. I think M has a question.
other than that, uh, again, much appreciated for, uh, giving your time up and your support for the company. And, uh, I really enjoy simplifying and trying to get down to, you know, what's going on in the water and, um, everybody's leading by example in, in this group. And, uh, that's ultimately the best way is intuition and just leading by example and sharing the good stuff. So thank you. Oh yeah. If you've never seen hump for red, that's a classic. I was going to make the questions a little harder too, because I thought those were easy. Um, how about, so M is asking read the four women against cancer. Um, how about uh, Jerry Tennant's healing is voltage. It's kind of got a mixture of writing and, you know, him selling his supplements, but I think he does a good job giving a foundation um, kind of goes more to the solution side of things there where uh, for women against cancer is more the mechanisms. Um, so, you know, kind of uh, understanding concept against solution. Um, as far as informational, I mean, I could go on and on like Shawberger's books Tesla 1893 on light is an excellent read if you can find it. Um, and he's one of the best writers you'll ever, ever like, he's just so articulate. Everybody thinks he's like all math and electrical circuits, but he's one of the most beautiful uh, writers I've ever uh, come across might be my preference. There you go. Yeah, Royal Rife's great too. This is hilarious. Like my cell phone's sitting here and it's like oscillating like it doesn't know what to do, flickering, and so is my second computer screen. But yeah, there's a lot down these roads, but you know, I try, you know, I went through kind of a lot of them and the ones that I was able to like put to work, because that's my gig. I really don't read to just read. Um, there's, there's quite a few kind of out of publication and off the record books that are really good or papers like 1893 on, on light is very good for like practical, like Tesla, I was talking about earlier how, you know, cause he really didn't get sacked too hard. And so I think he kept very private to with what he was working on. And he did a lot of stuff similar to Reich, um, you know, uh, torsion rings and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's really where it all came from monopoles. That's kind of what a torsion ring is. If you look at, uh, the free energy side of things, so-called the zero point energy side of things, you'll see a lot of monopole work going there. Uh, the carbon gene Z is a monopole design. The inside is, you know, all North pole. So the water is just exposed to not only, a a North pole, but a North, North, if you take into account some of the other things I've said about the North pole, having two poles. And, um, so, you know, we were cautious to see if we could over accelerate, um, if that was over accelerating and we had some mixed results with that, but by and large, seems like everybody's pretty adaptable to it. And in the end, I really don't notice much different now other than, uh, I'm acclimated to it. And if I drink three ounces of that water, like I don't really feel thirsty again to like two in the afternoon. It's, I know a few other people are the same way where their water consumption just went way down. And then uh, of course, if you use it with meditation and intention and, you know, homeopathy and all those things, it's a, it's a tool that can kind of keep evolving with you. Um, Oh, and that, yeah, sorry about the confusing. I didn't edit out the contest giveaway from the last time. So hopefully that didn't screw anybody up. So M, uh, not, so I'll address the audio recording that you have to go to our member site. Um, it's just too hard to email the file sizes. So all of them we have on our member site and Monique will remind me to do the previous one and get it up there if I forget, which I, usually do um so they'll come out like you know one staggered after the other one so 
Um, just depends when I can get to the editing and all that. Oh, M's question. What do you think about applying bio south haulback arrays to water for gardening? Um, I haven't practically tried that. We have a haulback schedule into the manufacture process of the dielectric crystals we make. In my opinion, way too much magnetism. Uh, that's what the haulback is, is a magnetic amplifier. So when you, you, you know, you're looking at 12 Teslas, 15 Teslas, um, but I haven't tried it. You got a mixture of poles in there too. Um, so I'd be happy to uh, hear what you get out of it. Um, and I actually went a different way than doing the haul back when I started thinking about it. Um, I saw something today when I, they were, uh, Doug was uh, manufacturing some MRs and I saw a natural magnetic arrangement. Uh, and I was, and I just got the idea. I was like, I think that's what we'll use instead of the haul back. Uh, just because it's kind of like a more horsepower thing. And what I've found with water over the years is like, it does not really respond that good to using a lot of force. And the haulback is design is jack up the, um, I shouldn't say the magnetic field, the, the whole entire system to uh, more power um, by the Gauss, the Gaussian field uh, in, in the center. But uh, it may have some merit. Uh, and I probably will get around to testing that out, but not not for the moment based on what I know. So they're pretty expensive, but uh, give us some feedback if you give it a try. So Susan says she's leaning towards electro gardening is where it's at using copper wire and tools. Now, copper comes back as a break. Um, for magnetic field. So it's a break against uh, the uh, inertial forces of, of grow, which is kind of one of those things where you, um, how do I put it? Where there's a conflict in the logic and the explanation and all this work, like, and you see it over and over and over again when you're reading it, that there's the, hey, this is a conflict. So copper oxide is a battery for life force uh, according to all the studies and copper is a break against the magnetic field. You can see that, but in the soil, the properties may reverse. They may be like, like that's my opinion is like the ground, the actual physical ground you're standing on is the dielectric equilibrium between the North and the South pole, the growth being the North um, from the upper perspective, right? It's kind of a mirror image flip, right? And so if you put a South Pole magnet underneath the ground, it probably encourages growth um, in the down direction, which is opposite of the plant growing up. And typically we don't like bury the magnets. Um, we're kind of exposing them to the plants like around the root base and at the ground level where the South is facing the ground and the North is facing up uh, or you're underneath the plant or the, the system. So um, Schauberger basically said the reason for it was the iron had was a, a push push conflict, right? So the earth has magnetic field lines, a matrix. And when you run an iron plow through it, like all everything's a magnet, right? Everything's a magnet, every atom, every microbe. And they all have this system like this. They built these highways and roadways and work with the natural growth. And then you come through there with an iron plow. And not only does it physically move stuff around, it magnetically distorts the earth lines all the way down to the microbial behavior. Um, it's interesting to note, you can't see this all the time with all plants. And a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of this stuff is how this goes. Is, it's true, but it's just a probability. And there's other factors uh, of other north south poles and derivatives of them. And non-spatial things like Causey Rev was talking about and spooky action at a distance and standing waves that Tesla was talking about. So Te Tesla actually drew a diagram of a piston pump pumping on the earth and then millions of little pistons like reacting to it. And some of them go up when you go down and other ones do the opposite. And that's what that's what gets everybody confused. 
that's what I believe the, you know, there's a mystery of the universe that you have to build a relationship with the earth. You can't just like get the fractals and be like, I know everything. And I know the pattern, even though that pattern is very prominent. And if you use it, you're more likely to hit a harmony than if you don't, uh, but you don't, you can't predict exactly how creativity is changing everywhere all the time. And you have to accept that. So, you know, that that's why people who, you know, party a little bit every now and then rather than being straight edge healthy like often are healthier than people who like have this good bad opinion of everything and never break their own discipline of having a good time and cutting loose and you know it's a little dangerous you know what i mean Ooh, you know you might do it too much and then not feel good one day well you're probably not going to feel good one day anyways because that's life um yeah i i uh I don't, I don't know about all the, you know, there's people who do that stuff and study, but uh, Susan's really good at like sharing the cutting edge of stuff and getting into things. So some good ad advice there to explore. There's just so much you can explore in this arena. And uh, I've just gotten to be bare bones, simple with my, you know, application type stuff. The simpler, the better is, is where I go with it. Um, you know, I, I, I will say there's merit for it. You know, I've told the story before about how we used a rife generator and soaked the plant and water tra trees of is basically a, a orchard. And so every orchard was just absolutely infested with the fungal infection. And within one day with the water and ground rods and the frequencies um, all the biologists could find was, uh, more or less, uh, the, the fungal, like metastasizing to the root system rescinded into a ball, like a tumor. And he dug up a tumor in every tree he dug up along the root side or along the periphery. And so there's a lot of truth to this stuff. And there's a lot of BS out there. And a lot of the BS comes from people trying to not do the work, right? I don't want to do more push-ups. Well, actually you got to do more push-ups to get your body more physically fit you're just not going to meditate it into into that direction um even though there might be some exceptions to that so you know be careful with the shortcuts and if you're doing your other due diligence on making relationship with the microbiology and all the living things in the soil and the elements to a reasonable degree which if you've attended any of these webinars you've definitely done that and beyond so i know i can be a little bit overbearing sometimes with this stuff but in the end it's heading towards uh you know, the information's out there. It's simple and, and go have fun with it. Right. It sounds like fun to me that is to build circuits out of the earth and help plants grow more. And, you know, it's, it's definitely like a breaking time right now. You know, the energy is very red is very like slow down in a good way. Uh, and kind of in a bad way, if for, for most, you know, when you look at what's going on and the truth of it, you get deep down into it, but it's just inspiration, right? It just fires up more people. Uh, I talk about that in the blog, you know, it just makes more Kazi revs and Tesla's and, and, you know, all these people who were in this light back then, uh, the Shaw burger, right. You know, when I found out about Shaw burger, I was already deep into water. I already spent most of my life enjoying my free time as much as I could fishing on a river uh rivers is what i really really liked even though i ocean fish and lake fish too but rivers was my preference and rivers by the way are considered to be a south pole left spin torsion so go go figure that if you want to talk about the the total dichotomy but if the south pole is the battery and water is a capacitor that's what you want and then it becomes an inductor and it again gives it off to the system when the system asks for it just like you would want to be treated right that's healthy water you know, you don't want things forced on you. You, you want to ask for them and receive them graciously. That's how the system works. Okay. This is a great question, M. I love this one. Um, it's because the line is so large connecting out to the size of the universe that nobody knows that it appears straight. You can't see the curvature in it, but it's reconnected at 90 degrees to an axis of uh infinite number of systems on that plane it would be called the dimension and that dimension moves 
just like the water level moves on earth. You just flip the whole thing 90 degrees. That's where the flat earthers actually have an argument because there are some measurements that come back as flat because you're at the superconducting state, the grounded state you're in resonance with that. So some of the math comes back that way, but not in this dimension, you, you know, in this perception of this dimension, you know, yeah, there is a flat earth, a part of the earth that connects to other dimensions. And so the axis that goes through the North and the South pole, you'll see that drawn up. And sometimes you'll see that appear during resonance. Some of the pictures I showed, um, showed the white stars actually projecting out of their North and the South pole and also projecting out like the rings. So both lines are shown ones like, uh, direct connection and the other one's unipolar or a monopole, meaning it, those lines of flux uh, connect to everything or create everything in an outward direction um, and get on a line with it, right? So each one of those would be different dimensions at 90 degrees. And that, like, don't overread the different dimensions. You and I are a different dimension. My computer screen one and two are different dimensions. Everything is a different dimension because it's in a different space. Anything that's identifiable is unique. And then there's the bigger dimensional shift, right? Like you can get from here to there. Those who have done ayahuasca, there's some who claim they've been on spacecraft that do that. Billy Myers and the Palladians, that whole story, you know, they talk about that and they gave that to NASA. So that's there. Um, Isabel just sent me an article that, uh, I forwarded to Monique, um, or at least I remember thinking that is uh, they're basically admitting like multiple dimensions and that dark matter. And ultimately they say in the article that water is space and it's the RNA. And they actually had to get to physical water to do that. Like ice particles collected on nucleotides that form pairs that form these twin pairs you know, and she was asking me if that's like the 100 nanometer pairs in the water. And, it, you know, it maybe, maybe not to prove that. But anyways, in principle, yes, it's it's a manifest always polarizes. Right. And now there's a relationship uh, and, it, and it represents uniqueness. One is not the other, even if they look the same. And another little tool I'll give. Um, in the understanding of electrodynamics and what's going on in the North and South pole, um, there, there probably should only be a, a one pole that there's a differential and there shouldn't be plus or minus. It should just be a lesser of a plus because when it comes down to get below the dielectric equilibrium in this dimension or get to the factual zero point ground, nobody's ever been able to hold it there and everybody, everything's in transition. Um, so if you want to think in new terms, just think relative, everything's plus everything's always growing, right. And it's growing out of space. It's growing out of nothing or growing beyond our perception from another, uh, perception from another dimension. And so everything coming in that we can observe that we'll ever be able to observe is probably, you know, you could call it a minus condition if you want. But this plus minus stuff confuses the hell out of everybody, just like the North and South pole, because there's, there's a pole within the pole. And then that dielectric equilibrium, which on earth is the water mostly, right? And on land, it's fixed moving around. It's like low altitude, sea level, mountains, 30,000 feet, right? That's a huge change. And at 100 volts per, uh, I don't even remember anymore. It's ridiculous what Tesla was able to pull out of altitude. That's why he made, you know, the Colorado experiments with the ball on top, like 300 feet tall, but it was something like 10 volts per foot, something like that. So, I mean, you get 30,000 feet up and you got a lot of voltage up there, right? There's, and so we're in a sea of voltage all the time, but we're made out of the same volts as everything else. And there really is no like ground, like going to zero, like the ground's probably billions of volts to be honest when you really start looking at atomics and how many atoms are there and how much energy they can hold and when that's converted into an electron you know which is how the whole nuclear physics study goes is like hey this thing breaks apart and you get x amount of you know positrons and electrons and helium you know alpha particle and neutrinos and quarks and all this stuff right and it's all the same it's just like a rattle in the ether that's a different size 
And some of it's more manifest and stable than others. An electron isn't really all that stable, but it's more stable than a quark or a positron, which is, you know, uh, 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 positrons are unstable because they usually group up. They're in the likes because uh, they're the truth, likes seek likes. So the electron is also positive because it breathes. So, you know, the positron is more in the truth of growing outward, right? So it just groups up and makes an atom and then the atoms get together and make a molecule or a bigger, uh, you know, atom, if you will, starting with uh, the, the rule breaker hydrogen, you know, hydrogen and hydrogen get together and they're both plus plus. But then after that chemistry and the whole bit goes, oh, opposites attract plus minus. No, we made that up. We made that negative up. So little tool there. It's a good way to wrap up. Appreciate the questions. Keeps me thinking. You guys are awesome. And uh, maybe looking around right after Thanksgiving or right before for the Shaw Burger gig and uh, kind of the pinnacle of the water deal. So I'm going to try and make that awesome. And I'm not putting any technical fancy stuff in it. I can tell you that much. Good night. Love y'all.